So there's probably about 100 ways to model a cup in ZBrush. So I'm just going to choose one um, and go with that. It's probably the easiest approach. Do um, we just take a cylinder, uh, draw that onto our canvas, go into edit mode. I personally am not a big fan of the wax material, so I'm going to change that to something like a skin shade 4 with a slightly darker material on it so it's not too offensive on the eyes. Uh, if I press Shift F, we can see how many divisions this is. So if we go down to initialize, we can bring that right down to a lower amount. We don't need too many. Something like that is fine. Um, and we're good to go. So now in order to sculpt on this or to change this, we need to make this a Polymesh 3D. So I'll hit that button and a new tool has now been created up here. So with the Z Modeler brush selected, that's B Z M. Now I can click and over the hover over an edge, click and I'll insert an edge. If we hover over polygon, you'll see that it no longer says insert edge loop, it says Q mesh a poly. So when we hold down Alt, I can just click and drag around these, making that selection. And then I can just click again, hovering over polygon, not holding down Alt this time, and drag it down. It's hard to see where this is on the inside of this cup. So what I'm going to do is hold down Control and Shift. Actually, I'm going to hold down W and I'm going to control and click on the pink area here. So now that pink area is selected, when I click on the go to unmasked mesh, unmasked mesh center, wherever my gizmo may have been, when I click on this, it's going to hover directly over that area. And that's where the pink currently is. So I can just move this down now to where I think the bottom of the cup should be. And I'll know that that's where that, that's going to be correct. We can control drag outside this to remove this. Press Q to go back into draw mode. And normally I would use dynamic subdivision on stuff like this, so it's quite a low resolution thing. So we just hit dynamic and you'll see our, the bottom of our cup gets very, very soft, as is the inside, and the lip is not very um, hard either. So what we're going to do is turn this off temporarily. We'll hover over a an edge and we click and insert an edge here and insert an edge here. And the next time we press D or turn on dynamic, you'll see that we get a much smoother transition now than we had before. Still not perfect, we may add another subdivision here to see pressing shift F on and off one thing about a mug is that it tends to come in or a teacup and it tends to come in a little bit so I'm going to press um, shift D to turn this off again shift F to see our wireframes and this time I'm going to hover over an edge and instead of using insert by pressing the space bar we can change that action to a scale of a not an edge an edge loop complete and that will allow us to scale this edge in we just click on one edge and drag in and the whole thing will come in. So the next time we press D now, we get a little bit more of a, a natural ending on that. We look up here and we still have a very tight looking lip. Um, so we'd like to change that. I'm going to press Shift D to get us out of dynamic mode again. Basically turns this off. We hover over an edge and we go back. Our default now is scale. So we go back to insert. We click and we just drag an edge up here, a support loop basically up close to this edge. So the next time we press D, we have a much uh, harsher edge on that. If we look on the inside, it's still a bit of a mess. We need to do the same thing in there. We hover over an edge and click and drag down to get close to the edge here, adding in support loops. So the next time we press D, we have an inside of a cup that's actually working for us. So that's our mug. And um, whether we want this to be a teacup or a mug is up to you. If you want it to be a teacup, we can hover over or uh, press W to go into move mode or transpose mode. Hit the little cog icon in, in here and then hit taper. Each of these tapers will taper from that angle. So we want to taper at the top, either pull it out and bring the bottom in a little bit to get a teapot, teapot <laughs> teacup shape. And we can change the exponent, which is basically how you know the, the bias, basically where that balance is, like until you find a shape that you like. That can be the shape of our cup. Once we're happy with that, we'll hit the little cog icon again and we'll hit accept. Um, and that's now a permanent part of our shape. So to create a little handle for this, um, I'm going to go into the front view here and I'm going to, I'm looking at this here and I'm thinking, well, I need a, a handle from here to here roughly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the cup as a basis for that. So I'm going to insert an edge loop. Sorry. <laughs> I inserted one of the other ones. So I'm going to press shift D to turn off our, our dynamic subdivision. Shift F to see what we're doing here. And I'm going to insert an edge loop now on the outside of this, somewhere around here. And I'm going to insert another one here. 
I'm just doing this for the purposes of getting an actual handle together. So I'm going to hold Alt and click on one here, Alt and click on another one here, and I'm going to then just click and drag to pull out a Q mesh. If I do this, it's going to be part of the cup. If you don't want it to be part of the cup, you can just press Control while you're dragging, and that will make this a separate mesh. So when you then let go of your of your uh, stylus and control, you'll have a separate icon here, or separate polygon. So now you can click and drag out a few times on this to start generating shapes. If we click up, up and drag, it will snap into place to what it thinks is the nearest polygon. So you may not have got these perfect. So if you click up a couple of times, it'll either snap to the one you want or it won't. I'm actually leaning either way. Um, if it doesn't, for whatever reason, just Press W to go into the transpose mode, Alt and click on the top polygon, or I'll click on the side polygon rather, just so your gizmo is actually going in the right direction. And that means that now, when you go to move this, to slide some uh, some verts, they're going to slide in the right direction. We can take Control and Alt and drag over an area of vertices here. This will mask everything except for those vertices. And because we know that this blue arrow is the same direction, because it was the, the surface normal here, we can move this across to somewhere closer to where we want it to be and then go back to clicking this and we know that it will snap into the correct one. Sometimes we have a little lip of clay, it tends to turn around here. So if we add in another edge loop here by clicking on an edge and then QMesh Poly is still on there. So we'll add a little bit of clay coming off here and we click on an edge here and add a little bit of clay coming off here. I'm gonna go back to our teacup. Um, if I press D, we'll see our teacup is okay, but actually, I don't like how this turns now, so I'm going to press uh, Shift F and I'm going to hold down Alt over an edge loop and I'm going to delete those two new edge loops that we created um, just because I don't think they're doing us any favors and the shape is we were losing that shape. So we now have a bit of a wobbly shape over here, uh, <laughs> which isn't looking good, but this is up to you to decide how you want to shape this now. Um, for me, uh, when you press W and you hold down Alt and you click on the side of your object, you're going to get a gizmo that's going to let you know where the, the face of this is. So if you need to change the thickness of this. Also at the moment, you'll see that we have various polygroups going on. We kind of want to separate these two out. So the best thing to do is to hit auto groups, which is under poly groups and auto groups, and that will automatically give them two. So now when we hit W and with control, if we click on any one of these, we we'll select that and not the other. So we can select this and don't <clears throat> and know that we're not going to affect the rest. By selecting anywhere on the side of this, we've basically said we know where how thick this is going to be. We can change the thickness of this without skewing it. So depending on how delicate a handle you want this to be, you can change that. And when you go and you Alt, Control Alt, select other things here, um, you know that this green, sorry. Control Alt and select on some, some polygons here. This green will be in line with the rest of it, so as will the blue. So now we can start um, creating this shape the way we like it. If you want this to turn over here, we can either collapse these edges or we can stitch them together by holding, hovering over a point, clicking on that and choosing to stitch two points to the end point. So I'm gonna select that first one and then I'll select the second one. Over here, I'll select the first point and select the second point and we get a curve in here. So the next time we turn on, we press D for dynamic subdivision, we get our handle here and holding down control and clicking on this handle will allow us to move that handle into place and we can rotate it depending on what suits you. And as I said, control shift and place this, uh, control shift and drag over any given points to move them around and you can start forming this teacup shape any way you like. Shift F to finish and there you have your teacup. Uh, if, sorry, I'll hold on control one more time in move mode and I'll just move that a little bit closer because I'm fussy. Control drag, okay, and that's your teacup. Hope this helps and if you have any other questions or tutorials that you'd like to see, please do let me know. Cheers, thanks, bye.